Welcome to the highlights. It's a day where England start off in a tremendous position. The Australians took a hammering on Saturday, as can be seen, first of all, with a reminder of the batting scorecard, 355 for one, with Robinson 140 and Gower 169, and then from the bowling figures, which make sombre reading. None for 75, Lawson, no wickets to McDermott, just one to Thompson, and everyone took a real shellacking out there. It was a day England and their supporters will remember for a long, long time. 20 runs ahead, England, when play began this morning, or rather, when it was scheduled to begin. Absolutely appalling. When play began this morning, or rather, when it was scheduled to begin. Uh, first of all, there were lots of uh, black clouds around, and then came the blue skies, and blue skies for England, when eventually they were able to get underway. Play began 55 minutes late. We pick it up now with a fifth ball of the second over of the morning. Five runs have been added. Craig McDermott, the strong young Queenslander, comes in to bowl to Robinson. Oh, it's a beautiful shot. Four runs all the way. McDermott dropping short. And uh, one of Tim Robinson's favourite strokes there. Well, this is the perfect uh, example here of how to hit the short ball off the back foot. Really crack it away. And Craig McDermott never really come to terms with this pitch in this match. He's bowled worse than he's probably bowled at any time on the tour so far. But uh, he's a very young man yet and he's probably done much better than you would expect. But certainly not coming to terms with this slow pitch at Edgebaston. There's more there. Three twenty-eight. Now this uh, stand is worth. So the uh, figures of three hundred partnerships by England have now gone ahead of Hobson Rhodes against Australia in 1911-12. It's going now to face Lawson. In a single, but uh, I wasn't quite sure where that was going in the first place. A period now of uh, quite pleasant sunshine, and plenty of blue sky, sun down. But, uh, still the forecast uh, for for the odd shower or two, but, uh, brighten up later. And that's uh, the area what normally where we've had the uh, the heavy rain over the last few days. So at the moment it looks uh, nice and clear. Lawson now to Robinson. Short ball again, put away square by Robinson. Fine shot. See how dumb that uh, outfield is out there. And the uh, veteran of the side, Bob Holland, having a long chase. Couple of vessels has come away from the gully now. He's going to try and block that uh, square cut. He's gone quite uh, deep on the offside. There they are, three of them. And he's gone. Well, this wicket finally goes. Robinson is bold. Uh, played it on there. Just too short of his 150. But a uh, marvellous effort that from Tim Robinson. Another big hundred to. Add to those he's already made, 148, it's 369 now for two. And Robinson bowled a Lawson for 148. He's gone through to 100 uh, before, he's made 160, 175, so another big 100 and uh, crowd on the feet here. And he'll be a little uh, disappointed to get out. But uh, he certainly marked his name on this game.
And in fact, Tim Robinson played like this once or twice on Saturday. You can see the bat going from gully towards mid-wicket, not straight. And that's the reason he got that inside edge onto his leg and then back onto the wicket. A bit unlucky, but uh, there were numerous occasions on Saturday when he did the same sort of shot and just got away with it. He went onto his body and went safe. But uh, it is a slight problem that on a quicker wicket that he might do that once or twice. So he does want to watch that, and I'm sure that uh, Tim Robinson's a very studious player and he'll watch that. You can see the bat here again. Instead of being straight, it's going across towards mid wicket lot there, so that when it goes off the bat, it goes onto his leg and then back onto the wicket. He's always looking to kind of get on his back foot and punch that away through mid-wicket, but uh, if it goes slightly wrong, that's what can happen. No immediate change in the order. Mike Gatting already out there taking guard. the uh, stand and the records 3.31 and that'll be a relief to Jeff Flawson it's over three weeks since he took a wicket in first class cricket and that one just hurried through a little getting late on the shot Yes, we've watched 300 odd runs made with that wicket falling. That wasn't a bad delivery to receive for your first ball. A bit of bounce just coming back, and that might get in quite a bit of trouble there. 175, David Gower. Dermot comes in. Very fine deflection. No chance of anybody getting round to stop it on the four ball. Again to Gower. Well, that's four. And loose delivery there from McDermott. No problem at all to the England captain. He stroked it away so nonchalantly. Jeff Lawson, and uh, he's bowling to Mike Gatting. Well, it's rather nice that Gatting should play a stroke of such quality to bring up a real milestone in uh, his cricket career. He's now scored a thousand runs in the calendar year from November the 28th last year. 575 of them in India and 425 in this series and um, it's not uh, all that usual in occurrence not many batsmen manage it in test cricket over the years Single to Gatting brought up 400 for England and three more runs added up to lunch to take it along to 403 for two. Gower 197 and Gatting eight not out. There was a delay of 35 minutes after lunch. Play didn't begin again until 2.15. We pick it up now with 11 runs added. It's the fifth ball of the third over. McDermott is bowling to Gower. No doubt about that. Glorious extra cover drive from uh, David Gower. Brings him past the 200 mark. Come back for the third. David Gower goes on to 202. A magnificent innings, his best in Test match cricket. Just turned uh, him past his previous 200 here, which he made against India in 1979. And a very popular double century this. Crowd on their feet. Alan Border nodding his congratulations. Mike Gatting shaking him warmly by the hands. A 6 and 25 fours in it. 
of 285 balls, and that's a good scoring rate. for Mike Gutting and uh, come quite a good deal closer for him there's nobody back there for uh, Gutting and it was again another beautiful shot Dermot again switching coming around the wicket it's a full toss and he's dropped him That really was a sitter. Well, as so often happens, the bad ball nearly gets the wicket. A lot of in full toss, and David Gow getting it probably a bit low on the bottom of the bat, and it going quite reasonable and steady there to Greg Ritchie at cover. He's picked that one up. Thompson is out there, and he's dropped it. Oh, would you believe it? Yeah, it's just a bit of a lazy shot there by David, and uh, he really is a bit exasperated by it all, definitely wanting to get on with it, and he just can't, and flips it up there. And really a pretty straightforward sort of a catch to Jeff Thompson. Taken a long time. Pat of congratulation there from Jeff Lawson to David Gower. As Gower goes out, court border bowl Lawson. Lawson now has taken two of the wickets and Gower has made 250. 463 for three. And England captains against Australia. Five of them have made uh, centuries over the years and Gowers is the second highest score behind only Wally Hammond. Here's the dismissal, short outside the off stump and he cracked it square straight at Allen Border. Good shot. Uh, that might uh, be marked down in some quarters as uh, a nick, but it wasn't. He waited on it and uh, just pushed it away very neatly. Jeff Thompson to come on from the members or pavilion end. That's the first time England have ever made 500 at uh, Edgbaston against Australia. bowling down the leg side Thompson's figures suffer and a lovely little leg glance there right off the face of the bat is the fielder. And 50 for Gatton. 
almost seemed inevitable. He's played very well. He's faced only 79 balls. And it's his fifth half century in the series. Both Lamb and Gatting in prime form. Cracking the ball all over the place. And some fairly untidy Australian bowling. Jeff Thompson having gone through to 100. It's replaced now by McDermott. Getting to face. Crush. What a great shot that was. This bowler put back over his head four glorious runs. It certainly was a great shot, and uh, nine more runs were added to take the score along to 545 for three at T. The match card at that point showed that England were in a commanding position, 210 runs ahead, with Australia having been bowled out for 335 in their first innings. Well, England continued to blast away at the Australians and uh, carve them all over the park, right up to the point where we pick up play now at 572 for three. McDermott is the bowler. He's coming into bowl to Alan Lamb. And he's gone. Yes, nicely picked up at uh, mid-wicket there. So the end of Alan Lamb at uh, 46, 572 for four. And we'll be capture. And a great roar. The great Ian Botham. What a sight coming out to bat with a score at 572 for four. And again, this is a pretty good shot. Didn't quite get over it. Hit it very hard. And the mid wicket there would dive into his left. That was a fine catch. <laughs> that is quite incredible. Quite incredible. First ball, bunk for six. And he's decided to get his eye in there, straight to the pavilion. Uh, incredible, really. Ball of McDermott's pace, and the first ball goes straight in the pavilion. And there's another one, six more to follow. This is absolutely incredible. Well, he obviously got his eye in with that first six because that went about another 10 or 15 yards farther than the first one. But what a perfect finish, complete follow through. And two marvellous big sixes out of the first three balls received. Crash that away on the leg side this time. Six six four. What a way to greet the Premier fast bowler on the opposition side. And that's another great hoik out to deep square. And he's been beautifully taken. What a good catch that was. So both of them sacrificing his innings to try and push the score along. But a tremendous catch out there by Jeff Thompson. Not an easy one. Hit high, swirling away. And McDermott is delighted that somebody's finally grabbed a good catch off him. So a disappointment of the crowd, but uh, both of them unselfishly not worried about averages. He's come there to get some quick runs. He got 18, as you can see, quickly. Two sixes and a four in it, and fell to that catch. A deep square leg boundary. It's mid off, mid on, coming now to save the single with getting on uh, 99. 
and it's through. And there's a single that uh, he wanted. He's got a hundred, he's kept running because that is the declaration. Well, nice little gesture there by David Gard to see if he might get him safely through to an undefeated century. And a batsman in absolutely prime form. Yes, a superb innings from Mike Gatting and uh, a nice time for the declaration with almost 600 runs on the board and they certainly came very easily again today, almost as easily as was the case on Saturday. A terrific performance from David Gower for his 215 before he was caught by Alan Border, Border's 80th Test match catch. And Mike Gatting, not out 100, he goes from strength to strength. He was in command all the time out there today. 595 for five declared. And the bowling figures for Australia tell the sad story. Far too often they bowled short, they paid the penalty, and there are three wicket takers there, two to Lawson, two to McDermott, and one to Thompson, but at very, very high cost indeed. So the position at the end of the England innings was that England were 260 runs ahead and uh, looking very, very good. Still plenty of overs to be bowled today and uh, still plenty of time for England. They have the full day there tomorrow. Here's the start of the Australian second innings now. It's uh, the fifth ball of the third over, 10 runs on the board, and Ian Botham is bowling to Hilditch. Oh, dear me, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Simply wouldn't believe it. Richard Ellison, the catcher, Two men out there waiting for the hook shot. Bowl the bouncer and hit it straight down his throat. Predictable bouncer. It's outside the off stump, which makes it difficult to hook anyhow. He gets a top edge, and Richard Allison pouches that very comfortably. Straight at 250 behind. Nine wickets in hand, and uh, a long way to go. Taylor, two vessels. Down, Embury, the fielder. That was a good delivery from Les Taylor. Sharp in pace, and it went off the seam. Well, his first step chances go. That was a very straightforward one. Now listen to vessels. That's out. No need for the batsman to wait for the umpire. Flash outside the off stump. And Ellison strikes. The Professor goes for 10 and it's 32 for 2. Yes, well, Ellison looking to move the ball end on this occasion. He swung it out, but it was a bit wide and uh, Kepler Vessels will be a bit annoyed with himself there. Bob Holland has 25 minutes to survive out there. And these uh, England bowlers and fielders will be right on their toes now. Three slips, two gullies. Now listen to Holland, who's on the mark. And his LBW first ball. <laughs> so Ellison's on a hat trick, and the ploy of sending in the night watchman once again hasn't worked. 32 for three, Australia. Well, certainly Bob Holland getting his foot on the wrong line here. You can see his foot goes right down the line of the stumps. That ball pitched around middle and straight in the middle of it about middle. So Holland Border having to come in in the end at 32 for three. So at 32 for three, Holland Border finding himself on the hat trick. And listen then to Border. And another very good hat trick ball. With a little bit of width and border to experience the campaign and to be drawn out there. <laughs> Listen again to Wood. I slobbed in the air, gentle. Anybody going for it? Oh, the word, yes. A long delay there. So Robinson finally moving in, taking the catch, and Ellison now is taking the three wickets out of the four that are down. 35 for four. Dramatic collapse here at Edgebuston as Wood goes for 10.
Alison drawing Wood into playing on the leg side and the ball slightly an outswinger to him went straight up and he was up for a long time and nobody looked to be going to go for it but eventually Tim Robinson came running in and you can see he's almost on the wicket before he uh, in fact caught it and probably half a dozen people could have caught it but uh, nobody looked too keen for a while there <laughs> Alison Underboarder well, what about that? Border goes clean bowl by Ellison, 36 for five. Real drama. And that could well be the final clinch bin there. Very sad. Dejected Australian captain there. Well, this might be the ball that decides the match. Indeed, it might be with uh, Phillips and Ritchie, the overnight uh, not out batsman, and the only ones to come O'Donnell, Lawson, McDermott, and Thompson. 37 for five. Well, who would have believed that could possibly happen out there this afternoon? And the reason it happened uh, is Richard Ellison, who very nearly didn't play in this match and already has four wickets in the second innings. A terrific effort from him. Both of them took the first one, Hilditch, and then Ellison's figures five overs, three maidens four for two what an astonishing performance that is and the match situation at the close of play on the fourth day Australia with five wickets in hand are 223 runs behind uh, Birmingham in fact